Hello traders, Gary Wagner here. Just before one o'clock in Honolulu, seven o'clock in New York, it is Tuesday, 16th day of March, 2021, and this is uh, the daily report for gold and silver. Fractional gains in both gold and silver, but quiet market action as traders and market participants await the conclusion of the FOMC meeting tomorrow, the statement as well as the press conference. On an editorial note, yesterday's video contained a 40-second gap, and unlike Nixon's eight-minute gap, there was nothing nefarious about it. It was a mistake. It has been corrected, so you can go back and view that. On today's show, I want to cover in detail our current trade in gold and silver. We did send out a trade alert. We raised our SOP. I will talk about why we raised it to that price point, as well as our upside targets, our exit strategy. I hope you enjoy the show. We do have a mixed bag in the precious metals markets today with gold trading higher along with platinum and palladium and silver off by just over a full percent. We're looking at the April contract of gold futures, $1,730.10, up a fractional 90 cents on the day. Earlier today, we did send out a trade alert recommending that we raise stops across the board. On today's show, I want to focus on why we raised the stop to the price point we did, as well as the underlying reasons that we actually initiated buy signals in both gold and silver. In terms of the GLD that we follow, because we are along that, that is at 162.35. And again, we'll go through entry as well as new stop placement. My two primary goals for today's show is to discuss our current trade, stop placement, as well as upside target, and then lastly, why we entered the trade in the first place. And that's what we'll talk about first. Obviously, this market had a tremendous rally when it moved from approximately 1450 up to 2088. But from there, we had this multi-month decline that just came a little bit below the 61.8% Fib retracement. And that, to me, is a very logical place to look at the market as being way oversold and finding a potential bottom. Now, in silver, we had a pure engulfing bullish. If we enlarge this, you will see that it was a variation of an engulfing bullish. And the reason that I'm calling a variation is you would need to have had this green candle open below the prior close. It did not. But what we did see, just as we saw in silver, was what we look for, which is a confirming candle, which is a higher high and a higher low. We got that. Now, initially, I need to put a stop at least three days, the low of the last three days, which was this candle here, and that is why the initial stop came in at this price point. However, we raised that today, and the rationale behind that was that we're raising it to the lowest low over the last three days, which is here. We have 1693 as a 61.8% retracement, so we moved it to 1690, and that is the reason we entered the trade, the reason we initially put our stop here, and why we moved it again higher today. So, as you know, we saw a opportunity because the retracement was just below the 0.618% Fibonacci level. And that, to me, is a very logical point to look for it. We had the engulfing bullish. And so now the question becomes, if we are correct, where could the market go? And to do that forecast, I really have to combine not only Fibonacci retracement, but Elliott Wave. And the way that we're doing that is we're looking at this large move as the completion of a primary fifth wave. So under the assumption that we have just completed a fifth wave when we hit our record high back in August, and that this is a A wave right in here, that means we would go into a B and then a final C wave. Now, typically the way we calculate or project a B wave is that it will go anywhere between an area between the 50 and 75% of the move that was realized on the way down. 
And so that's exactly what I'm calculating, as you will see, because what we are projecting is that we have the possibility of the market moving to about 1882. That would be a 50% retracement of this move down up to about 75, which is why I'm labeling this as a B2. Now realize C is not drawn to scale. You would either get a flat. If it did come here, it would be truncated or it would go below 1675. So I believe we have a dynamic rally ahead of us. We have one more pretty deep correction that could take it lower to the tune of 1675. However, once that C waves con concludes, we start the clock all over again and we go from waves one through five. We're back in the impulse phase. So why I am bullish, short term, interim, I am neutral to bearish. Long term, I'm extremely bullish on the market. And that's our current assessment for gold. Traders, we had a very choppy session in U.S. equities with the composite closing fractionally higher, S&P and Dow Jones Industrial Average fractionally lower. That might be a reason that we are seeing a decline in pricing for silver because of its heavily used industrial component. Currently, we have May futures at 25.99 and a half cents that's down approximately 29 cents on the day and slv also lost just shy of a percent and that is currently trading at 24 dollars and 10 cents when we first recorded the price board we had closed in new york but now australia has opened it is 1207 here in honolulu which means that it is now wednesday morning there it is currently at 26.01 and a half. What I like about silver more than anything else is that besides the 50-day moving average, we have moved above all of what I had considered to be potential resistance areas, primarily this resistance area here at 26.12. And so we're just at that price point there. We really want to see it take out the 50-day moving average and as I said, my upside target for this particular trade in silver is going to be a range again from $28 and call it 30 cents up to $30. Those are the two price points that I'm picking. In terms of our stop movement today, we did the very same thing that we did with gold in that initially when this is the engulfing bullish that got us in. This was our confirming candle. That's why we entered at this price point. Initially, we had put our stop below a low of three days, which was this one. However, we moved it to just below the low here, and that effectively is why we were able to move our stops up so quickly. Uh, in terms of our SLV trade, it's basically the same thing. We moved it to a three-day low. Let's pull up that chart. And what you can see is that this is the three-day low here. When we put on the trade, this was the low here. So our stops are effectively right under here. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you, as always, good trading. We will talk to you tomorrow for the next daily update and review, along with an interview with Kitco's David Lynn.